Welcome back to the Ether Keep, where, you guessed it, it's a perfect season. We did it. Ignore this. It doesn't count. Normally, I'd give some sort of spiel at the beginning, but we're gonna jump right into it because it is content time. We got some content for you. This is a Levin Tarantino film, and it is called Kill Claude. So let's see exactly how that works. How about that? How do we feel about that? What do we got? We got Claude. We got Alir, we got Catria, we got Thor, we got Plumerius, stacked all the way up with skills. And we have Linhart. Uh, this is supported for charge. With Catria support, no less. This is like pro probably the strongest offensive threat in the entire game. I think, like, maybe uncontested, Catria supported Claude is the strongest nuke in the game. As you can see, I came to the same conclusion on my defense team. So they take their time to set up, get the shot lined up just right, no bolt tower. Claude goes in, lethality into a blue unit. When the fighter is a hardy, it feels pretty good. So they have to back up, and from here, we heal all the way back, it's like he did nothing at all. My Claude gets a chance to go in, wreak a little bit of havoc. Goodbye, God Plumeria. I wish I had your skills, but I do not and probably never will. Unless we get really blessed with that remix coming up. It's like next month, right? I'm pretty excited for that. Now, Claude, with the actual catchy support, goes back in. He did hit a zero there. If I if that's the thumbnail, it's not a lot. He did hit a zero on a blue unit with Gatry support. <laughs> you can't you can't say I'm lying if I use that. But uh My Claude is really making the bigger dent in their team than theirs has been able to make in mine, because I really like Rudolph as a far save, I just do. Everything set up just right. And I mean, nothing. Made, this came in on the first day, right? Nothing could make me happier than the team that I built to stop Claude, tanking a Claude, neutralizing the threat, and then just running him down. It is so satisfying. There's no better feeling than um, identifying this is the threat in the meta right now. Here's how I'm gonna beat it, and then just seeing it work. Also, check this out. Who needs Hardy Fighter? Who needs it? I'll run my beast follow-up. And the reason I do that is because when he's not in beast form, he doesn't get the special acceleration, so... I don't know, it kind of like messes up the rhythm of a hardy fighter type thing. Maybe he doesn't need it as much because he gets the follow-up prevention, maybe it's better to just... I don't know, he is near save. I should probably just give it to him. I have so much hardy fighter fodder and I've never given it to a single unit, so... It's probably about time to do that. You might say, how did Rudolph get it? And that is because... He's a former unit. Claude overkilling as hard as he possibly can. And, I mean, that's just that. It's a six foes down. That's the way it works. Okay, now we can get into the housekeeping. A quick talk about the team. And um, also, you might notice the new overlay that I introduced last time without knowing I was going to. <laughs> Um, I think it looks really good. I'm getting some comments that it might be too bright. Could you please let me know down below if that's true? I've already tried turning down the saturation and some other things to make it a little bit less of a problem. It, it, it doesn't bother my eyes, but I mean, I might have stupid eyes. So please let me know down below. I, I like this, I like the colors, but if it just doesn't work, it doesn't work and I will figure out something else. It's not that hard to change things, so I can make that happen, but I need to know what works, what doesn't, and what matters. So please, please comment. It's not an engagement trap. I just need to know to help you. That's that. Thing number two is, um, what does this team do? Well, I've been talking about how Claude is like the premier nuke, right? And with Catria support, he's like the premier premier nuke. He can do anything, which means that I normally have, um, two nukes, now, much less weight has to be carried by the second one, so he has to do something else. Which is why I selected Duo Krom, because his job is not to destroy tanks. His job is to move and get to the places where the tanks are not. And I think he does a good job of that, which you'll see soon enough. 
We're also going to turn off animations for most of these just because there's a lot of replays, the video is going to get long. And I, I don't think it's that important for most of them. It's pretty much the same stuff. So turn them on in key places, but let's get through this and talk about it. So this team, sorry, this team brought uh, Golveg, who's a good unit. Altina, guard bearing three. I gotta get like some. I want to get for guard bearing four. I really do. I think she's one of the best users now because Gambit's no good on here. We got Naga plus six. We got Fjorn plus two, with a the life and death, which actually I think does have some synergy, but maybe is not necessarily the right angle to take. I'm not sure. We got a Shara, and we got another Fjorn. We got a Fjorn fan here, which. You know, this unit may be a little bit of a cheeser, but when they're doing it like this, you have to respect it. So what happens here? Nothing happens here yet, but something's about to, probably, right? Okay, they want the pots, understandable. Fjorm's in position, she doesn't need support, she's Fjorm. But, um... Claude can just do it like that. However, it's not <laughs> not really Krom's finest moment. <laughs> okay. And, I mean... Yeah, they're kind of just... Look at this dude go! Look at him go! <laughs> it's that hard to take down Rudolph. Three initiations with two pretty powerful nukes. I mean, maybe a share is aged, right? But, I mean, uh, both turns from Gulfeg? Oh man, I'm really, I'm really glad. I think he, he is content. I, I live for this unit. He's like my favorite far savior. Is he the best? No. But is he my favorite? I really think so. He's just fun. Okay, let's keep it running with number three. It's another Summerfjorm, and this one is a uh, res instead of speed. Oh, right, the life and death is because your thing is based on speed at start of combat. So that's, there's actually something to that. You get a decent amount of uh, value for doing that. And it also makes the ice, the frostbite mirror hit harder, which is really something. So we got, whew, the Ivy fan of the world, who's also giving some null follow-up support to Fjorm. Great synergy there. Gives Altina some movement. What else do we got? We got Gunther. Didn't expect to see Gunther here, but she does, I mean... Drop big debuffs. Unfortunately, Freer kind of stops that. We got Altina, we got Sather, and we got Thor. So let's see what happens. I think it's probably going to be pretty similar. They just go in. They just go in. She's got the support. She doesn't need anything else. And there is something very interesting that happens here. Really something that I find to be very interesting. Two different Fjorms, two different merge levels, two different builds. They both take 44 and 42 and 42. Like, how does that work out? First of all, it's weird in the first place that, like, Lethality exactly counteracts Frostbite Mirror, apparently. But it's also weird that they both took the same numbers. Anyway, Claude gets it done. On to the next one. And here, we have another person I give me a taste of my own medicine. It's Claude v. Claude. And we're about to see what exactly that means for the world. They also have my arch nemesis on the team. Who is plus one, plus zero, zero, zero. Max. So this is kind of a hit and sit. They want to go in with one of these to take out something important. And then let Fur deal with the rest. And then plus zero. Okay. How does this strategy work? Set up. You always gotta set up. And freeing their movement options. Getting a pot. There's that bolt tower. He lives the lethality even after, but that was a pretty meaty hit on the second shot, so I don't know. Maybe running deflect missile would have been the move this week? I didn't really think about that. I'm not wholly convinced, honestly. So, things are looking a little bit dire. My saviors are both down. But, thankfully, Krom do be moving. Even when Sather does her best to stop it. But this this fear is um, really something. I, I think that if they'd won that trap gamble, I might have lost. So, 
luck, but also skill in my placement, right? But yeah, that uh, that fur, I I she might actually be able to go toe to toe with Claude. Honestly, she might have the stats for that. I do not know. All right, now we have my other favorite replay of the week. My other favorite replay of the week. So, this Claude has 67 HP. Take a note of that. What else do we have here? We got Plums, merged up. We got Regan, decently merged up. We got Elincia, I'm very jealous. I haven't gotten mine yet, but it's a work in progress. We got Claude, obviously. You gotta have Claude. Sather, lots of Sather. Everyone's running Sather. Is there anything I don't know about Sather? And Krom, Krom v Krom, movement v movement. So how do they approach this? By going right in, and uh, neutralizing the hardy fighter factor. He doesn't he doesn't do so well when you uh, shut that down. That much is true. Looks unsafe, except it's safety fence time. So now they have all the time in the world to not only take out my dancer, which should theoretically greatly limit my threat range, but also Get as far out as they gosh dang well please. I mean, that's about as far as you could hope to retreat, right? <laughs> like, there is not a way to hide six units further away than this. So what happens? Assist skills, baby! The true secret is in the assist skills. Now you might be asking, Levin, how did you know the AI would do that? And the answer, like every other success I've ever had in my life, is raw dumb luck, obviously. <laughs> I didn't know that, it just happened to work out. I, th um, I have been paying very careful attention to giving the right units assist skills so that my dances go to the right places. Like here, you'll notice everyone actually has an assist except Claude, so that Claude can get the priority dance. But it also means that things end up in predictable places for Krom to warp and repo, which is pretty good. Alright, what do we got here? We got Regan. Nary emerge to be had. We got Regan, Sather, Soren, and Edelgard, who doesn't need near save. I actually kind of like this. I really like the, the, the uh, free-to-play budget moxie behind this team. The Corrin, obviously, a good pick. And Anna, bonus Anna, I, yeah, it must be bonus Anna. So, what happens? How do they approach? Take a turn to set up. Why not? It's free. You have the fence and everything. And then... Take a little more time. Ooh, there's a bolt tower. Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, so, because has no follow-up, that one does go off. Requires the bolt tower, though. And now, Claude just takes it right to Corrin. I think, I think the real thing Claude has done to change the game, like double lethality is a lot, but he also just, it is trivially easy to get this dude to like 105 speed, I feel like. And I don't think, I feel like benchmark before, like if you were hitting 90 on a tank, you were pretty good, and now it's like, it's just a new tier, you gotta figure out something else. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I misunderstand, maybe we've gotten lucky, but I felt like 90 was a really good place to aim for before, and now it's... It's not enough! You, I mean... First of all, you have to be able to live the first lethality, but... If you don't have a disgusting amount, you're gonna have to live two, and that's way harder. So, sorry, sad dancer. That's the way. And now... We find out the answer to what beats, what, what, what does this team lose to? And the answer is actually someone we've seen before. So, here is Thor, here is Azura, Plums, who's not bonus, but Naga's bonus, Naga's the bonus unit, right, right, unmerged. Another crazy stacked Plumeria, is this one? Yeah, Formid, that tracks. And, Gulveg, minus speed plus res, unmerged Gulveg, is the answer. Check this out. They don't even need to take advantage of, this, of the safety fence turn, because they don't have one. I hadn't thought about that. What they do have is the bolt tower. 
Um, which, look, I'm a, I'm like rank one Bolt Tower hater. Definitely no one hates Bolt Tower like I hate Bolt Tower. And they got so lucky it was placed just right. But she still needs two combats to take him down! This unit goes crazy! But, um, getting rid of Krom there is pretty good. Especially, so... Having a lot of dancers is very powerful, and yeah, just the sheer number of actions, the bonus damage from Flare at Sparrow, that is something that's pretty hard to defend against, unless you have like a cav line, some sort of trap turn one team. I don't think there's really any team that beats literally everything right now, maybe there never truly has in this game, but at, at, at this point in particular I think it's very difficult to account for every possible strategy. I got very lucky that this didn't count, but I will say that I did get two wins in the same day as this match, so I'm pretty com comfortable still calling it a very successful week. A perfect week. We call it perfect because we didn't lose any lift. That's what matters to me. So yeah, Gulvig can just clean things up, and you know, animations are off because we just don't need to see Gulvig animation 30 times or whatever, you know? There's only so many times it really still has that punch. Now nah, someone rematched me. I think you will see this match in the offense matches I'll upload later in the week of why I'm getting rematched here. But uh, let's check this out. They have a crazy invested Veronica, Peony, Naga, Ashera. I'm getting so there are such interesting mixes of mythics being used this week, it feels like. Did not think I'd see so much Ashera or Sather. But I think people are trying to make big Sather plays. So. How does this one go? Looks like they're trying to make something happen with Vero. A unit who's kind of fallen from grace, I feel like. Just doesn't carry the same... Fear factor? This was like, pretty easily the scariest offensive threat in the game for a decent chunk of time. And now she's just kind of... Expected, I guess? Anyway, Krom is really doing his job. Like, he's not coming in in every match, but he's coming in when he needs to and making it happen. Because that, that was surprisingly safe. They were going to get to do stuff, but I think just the Rudolph v. Veronica match is kind of lopsided, so... I don't know what happened, but we don't have to find out, because Krom was the right pick for the team. Next up, another five foes down. What do we got? Ira the offensive threat? Rarely seen? Another... what's... okay, unmerged. This unit... I don't know what to make of this unit. She seems really good because of all the Kanto and stuff, but also no piercing, but the double special? What's the word on Ira? I don't know what to think of her. Alright, Naga plus four, Tiki plus two... Her stats look kind of crazy though, I can't lie, like the speed being that high with no actual investment is... Maybe there's more to this unit than was thought, but again, the threshold is 100 now, so... Um, okay, Elamine and Fajorm. Looks like they're gonna take some time to set up. I guess making a play on FOMO? Ooh. That's a pretty big Bolt Tower hit, but it's not really enough value off it, you know? The premier Fjorm counter right there. It's like we're transported a year or two back. How old is, is Fjorm two years old now? That's weird to think about. Still not an irrelevant unit. Though, yeah, the, the, the tank life is tough these days, and um... What it, can, can Tiki do it? How? What's the Tiki story? Apparently, geez, Catria takes down that Tiki. That's pretty wild. She meets Frere. Okay, okay. Wait, wait a second. This there might be something to this unit. This side might be pretty good. And, I mean, from there, you really can't do much, so... Cool to see the Ira go off, but... Just didn't have the tanking prowess, because nothing really does. 
All right, now we have a very cultured Shamir user. Still one of my favorite units in the game. Love that unit. Ooh. Now Maria can make things happen. We got Bold Edelgard. Looks like it looks like another kind of hit and sit type of deal. I guess Corn's probably like Omni tanking here. It's a lot of support. We have Cornelia to make it easier for Adel to go in and snipe something. Um, not a great number of merges flying around, but someone likes their corny. Okay, yeah, let's see this one in action. It does look like they're preparing for the Adel factor. So she's gonna go after FOMO and that is... That's like nothing. Yeah, that, does he need Harpy Fighter? If he's already doing it like that? Jeez. And once again, Claude just really... Right through Maria. Yeah, Claude really personally saw to it that Corrin's reign would be short. And this is a pretty strong formation. I mean, someone could one-range Krom, but, you know, he's got a good chunk of defense. That's not the easiest thing. Yeah, I'm very happy with the way the team handled that. Everybody did their job, as usual. Everyone's doing their job on this team, and I like that. Two more. Uh, it's going to be just barely over 20 minutes, so. See, we had to turn animations off. It's already out of hand. There's just so much going on. Okay, we got this unit. We got more Miracle support. Everybody is Miracleizing. Miracle Corrin. That seems to be the thing. But people are not investing in her speed, and... You know, I guess when this is the number, maybe the defense has become more important, right? Like, if you can't hit that 105 or whatever... Maybe you just have to make those compromises. So... Going in from the side. How interesting. Okay, second up stats, got some bonus DR, don't have the Miracle down, but I'm not sure if it matters, right? Because, yeah, like, already she's out of the range, so. That's that, Claude can really just do it. There's the Miracle. But krom has got too much going on for that. And that's it. Alright, one final replay to rule them all. And, oh yeah, this person is just stacking their Krom to the sky. We got Unmerged, plus three, plus foe, plus one, another one. Everybody is formating their Plumeria. Ooh, the dagger. Okay, so they, yeah, they're just really stacking stuff up on this dude. He's got some serious things. And, yeah, this is just like... A crazy bonus cocktail. Okay. Let's put on animations just to send it off Viking funeral style. Okay, they're approaching from the side. A lot of people like to approach from the side. Now, this is not what I expected. But I really... Like, we have to see these two units. You both stack, like, infinite stats off bonuses. Just how far are they pushing? So you got 64 visible, you've got you're gonna have 66. That's the assist thing I was telling you about. Oh, I guess we don't get to see. Well, he's still hitting like 86 speed there. And I think Dogger must have some debuffs. I don't really know what all the weapons do anymore. And there is Krom doing Krom stuff. Ooh, the lulls are doing a lot. Never mind, I was looking at the wrong prom. Tech plus 12, speed plus 21. He's stacking some impressive numbers. I wonder if... There's no way... Do you think Claude didn't win that? Huh. Well, either way, my movement and assist skills worked out once again. This Krom got to live, though. Very interesting unit, very cool how he's aged so well. 
Anyway, that is my perfect defense season. And as you can see, I haven't finished my offense season yet, so please smash that subscribe button if you want to see how that plays out, because I will be recording those two matches, and I have some other ones recorded that I'm going to upload too, so the offense season will be documented, if not completely. And that's my week. Let me know about yours down below. Please chime in about the overlay situation. I want this to be great for everybody. And I'll be back very soon with more of this Astro Anima season and more Fire Emblem Heroes content in general. So I hope to see you there. Till then.